Hey everybody. Hello. Welcome to the show. <clears throat> if you are new, thanks for joining us. Hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to do a nice short and sweet intro today and just pretty much to mention our sponsors. So if you want to fast forward through this, do it after our sponsors so you can go buy something from them. Mountain Primal Meats. Tell them about it, Kevin. They got <laughs> <laughs> they got the best meats. <laughs> Actually, I've got some meat. I just cooked up. What did I cook up the a, a um, ribeye? That was really good. Um, Everything I've had from them has so far has been good. Yeah. Actually, we're supposed to get more fuel sticks in this week. Yeah, except my barbecue is taking a shit. It's like nine years old, so it didn't cook them very well. I mean, I don't really like the infrared necessarily anyway mm-hmm. for cooking steaks, but it's infrared, so one of those. Yeah, and it's not. It's kind of old, so it they got chewy. So that's a clear indication that um, it's not the right way to cook them because they shouldn't be that way. It still tasted awesome. Um, well, if you do like meats, which if you don't, do you hate America? That's what I would think. Yeah. You support communism. <laughs> But anyways, yeah. <laughs> if you like meats, <laughs> mountainprimal.com, use the code mission prep, one word at checkout, and that'll get you 15% off your first order. And they have delicious stuff from meat to the fuel sticks are awesome. Those are my favorite. And then they even have some cool merch and oh yeah, things of that nature. You can go buy and put our code in and it helps us out. So go do that. Next sponsor is Amp Tree Works. This is only for you folks living in the Boise, Idaho area. But Amp Tree Works can do anything related to trees, from putting them there to taking them down to maintaining them to all that good stuff. So hit them up, give them a call, go to their website, amptreeworks.com, and tell them you heard about them on our podcast. All right, I guess we can get into the episode. Our guest today is George Bell. He is the vice president of Fieldcraft Survival. And a pretty cool human being. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So, let's do it. I'm re- reaching out, and it's not like Mike or someone else. It's always hard to find like a good guest. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, it is. But and I enjoy him. We've been lucky with, uh, with our guests that we've had kind of referring us to other people and and yeah. connecting us and then uh we got one of our sponsors mountain primal they've been pretty cool with hooking us up with some people and oh that's cool it's it's cool yeah we're trying to trying to grow this thing even, oh yeah even though now kevin's schedule just got busier than it has, has been for the past couple months <laughs> Heck yeah Might as well are you gonna be awake for this i just started drinking my coffee i didn't want to like drink it <laughs> Driving me down to school and have like a panic attack or something. So I was like, oh, wait to drink my coffee till I'm on the way home, like almost there. The, so I know I'm in a safe place or something. I the don't know. Infamous panic attacks. Yeah, no, I feel that. I feel you on that one. We uh, on our way to um, the course this weekend, I had one of those 300 milligram cold brews they got. <laughs> I, I got halfway through and I'm like, I can't. Like my whole body felt like it was like running with the, with the van. Like I was outside looking in at myself running. Like it was just. <laughs> too much oh seriously <laughs> yeah it just gets to a point when you're like by the time you get to your 30s you're like you just can't down coffee yeah. like anymore you know like i like I'll, I'll try to drink coffee but sometimes it's just I, I gotta wait a couple hours before i wake up before i get that first cup in because it's just gonna yeah it, you know it's that warm good. liquid that caffeine just gets in your intestines and starts pushing stuff out which mm. you can't control you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still I'm still one of those people who like I don't feel the effects ever of coffee. I can drink coffee all day from the time I wake up till I go to bed, and I'm I don't feel like, the effects. But yeah, like my favorite drink, like my guilty drink is uh, Mountain Dew Kickstarts because they taste just like uh, pop. Mm. There's no like that weird aftertaste or anything. But I can drink three of those in a day and not get like anything from it. But that one can of that Black Rifle stuff, I don't know what they use that like. They got a lot cocaine, of cocaine. Lot of cocaine caffeine. caffeine <laughs> there, man. They've got a lot like, of caffeine in those things. Yeah. yeah, like Jack 3D. Yeah, like the original the Jack the first 3D. Time they came out. Yeah. That was the good. That was the good formula. Yeah, it made your dick hard and everything. Like, <laughs> yeah, damn right. Yeah. <laughs> then you can get all those other pills. Like, I, I was stationed at Fort Bragg, and they had uh, 
there was a there was steers and then there was another one but i think it was steers i went to and it had this little bottle it had it was like it was like one of those a those a words like androstein or whatever it was yeah yeah there's this little bottle had like a fire on the front and i took those things and those were the best supplements i ever took and then you know they got banned and i'm like <laughs> just let me use steroids if i want to you know what i mean it's my body like yeah. i want to be like when you're in the military you got to think of like I'm, I'm an athlete you know what i mean like i gotta take care of my body why wouldn't you be putting soldiers on like testosterone replacement therapy yeah. and like and just regulating it you know what i mean just to the point where it's healthy for them the fear I, is yeah the fear is prior to your 40s getting on it is one i think is oxidative stress um but the other which can be mitigated by diet and the other yep. is the blood plate, platelet buildup which, oh okay but that's really only if someone's using like superhuman doses if you're doing physio- if you're doing physiological doses it's really not that bad and if you do get a buildup of blood platelets like you're going to your doctor and getting your blood checked you go donate blood and then you're fucking good again you go you donate get a blood. little check you get a little 50 dollar check or something from it you know? yeah yeah um <laughs> no totally yeah I, I, it's so weird well, that's plasma but anyway yeah. yeah well shit i guess we can we can get started um and so the way we'll uh you're recording aren't you I, it's recording oh, but okay but I, we were just bullshitting, right? Well, you don't take that out. No, I'm gonna leave. Oh, I'm gonna okay. leave everything in. I'm just gonna kind of tell him. Uh, and then what was I? I just lost my spot. What was I gonna say? <sighs> Sorry, I'm an asshole. No, you're not. Oh yeah, you are. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, no. So this I was gonna tell you. This will be out tomorrow morning. Okay. So it'll be available, and if you could do us the awesome. big big favor and share oh, yeah, share definitely. it and stuff, I that will. that helps us out a ton. Oh and yeah. Then, um, also, after we're done, if you could maybe send me like four pictures like good pictures okay. of yourself i can use for promotion and stuff we'll do that would be awesome i'll cut all that part out okay <laughs> so yeah so we'll we'll start in the way we roll with this i think i told you is it's pretty open we just let yeah. it roll where it rolls obviously we'll talk about field craft we'll talk about you all that good stuff and then wherever the conversation takes us it takes us and we'll go for sounds good right about an hour ish and and then kevin gets to go back to school yeah <laughs> dude i i signed up I have I had to take one a one credit elective class. I'm a senior and I I pushed off a lot of my freshman classes and stuff. So I have to yeah. take like a music class and and I have a one credit class. So I was like, oh, I'll do like ultimate frisbee. I don't know why I fucking put ultimate frisbee. <laughs> and like I rolled my ankle yesterday, so I can barely walk. And so yeah. I'm like, I have to show up tonight and play ultimate frisbee with a bunch of fucking kids. I'm like that that that's the thing about college that gets me, man. It's like it's like the electives. You want you want me to do? I'm a senior, like you said. Like you're a senior, and you're you know, whatever the, how you're you're paying for college, but it's like, I have to pay my own money to take ultimate Frisbee so that I can have this elective on my thing. It's like, why can't I just start with what I, what I want to do? You know? (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, they say it's all about becoming a learner, but I know more people than not, they have like graduate degrees that are pretty fucking stupid. (laughs) Like they're good. They're good at the one thing they do, but it's like, so becoming a learner means, Oh, my toilet just broke. Let me figure out how to fix my fucking plumbing. That's be, that's yeah. a learner. That's someone who's adapting to, you know, what's going on in their life right there. But uh-huh. I don't see a whole lot of that. So I'm going to say bullshit uh-huh. and say it's a business, but whatever. <laughs> it's a business, um, yeah. <laughs> well, so I guess we'll start with, for the people who are listening that don't know who you are or what Fieldcraft Survival is, can you give us a little background on yourself? And then we'll talk yeah, a little so, bit about uh, Fieldcraft. George Bell, uh, born and raised in Steubenville, Ohio. Um, I went to, uh, so when I graduated high school, I went to college. I tried to do the whole college thing. Um, I got into this pharmacy college that was really good, um, Ohio, Nor- Ohio Northern University. And, like, I wish I could say, like, I partied and, and I slacked off. And I, honestly, I just couldn't keep up with the curriculum, man. It was just, like, one thing after another was, like, calculus. And I had physics and biology and, cal- and then chem-, chem 1 and you had the labs. And then just, it was just too much. I wasn't, I, uh. I didn't have a good like study habits like from high school. I just kind of got by in high school, and uh, I learned a hard way after I got that year of uh, pharmacy college. Uh, I got that let that that letter in the mail, that letter of uh, well, you, you're suspended for a couple of semesters. You know what I mean? Like until you go somewhere else and get your grades up. Yeah. So I I attempted to do that summer school sub. I took a couple of classes. I passed. I was like, okay, great. And then I was like, realized like, is this what I want to do? Do I want to sit here the next six years racking up like 
hundreds of thousand dollars in, in, in student loans and then having to pay that shit back. Like my brother is still, I think still paying on some student loans he has like just because of the interest and you defer it. So I said, you know, what? I'm going to join the army, get that shit paid back and then just go from there. Cause I, I in my mind, like in the back of my mind, I always had the army there like growing up GI Joe's you wanted to serve, you see like desert storm, you, 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 know, you live through all these little things. And it's like, well, that's what I can do. It's a, it's, you know, it's a paycheck, it's a job and it could be a good career. So I joined in 1998 in October from Pittsburgh Meps. And uh, when I went to recruiter's office, like, well, my recruiter, it was a, she was a female and she was like a radar, like specialist or something like that. I was like, and I just wanted to join. I didn't care what I did. No, thank God I got into where I was at now, but um, I tried to do, be this like radar missile thing or something like that but my hearing I, on the, the hearing test one of the i think it was my left or right ear whatever it was like the one of the uh, the, me- the measurements or reading where they do was lower it was like a low number or something i couldn't i didn't make the cut for that mos so i'm sitting there in the in the in mep station they're like well we have uh this we have that i was like you know what i said i want to jump out of airplanes what do you have for that? They're like, we have an infantry. I was like, all right, I'm ready to go. I can leave in two weeks. So they're like, well, this one doesn't leave until like January. And I didn't really understand like fiscal years and shit like that. Hmm. So I was like, oh. I was like, is there anything else? Like, like I want to leave like as soon as possible. I'm like, yeah, we had this uh, psychological operations. And I was like, Ooh, what's that? And they read it to me. It was like change, change behaviors and influence people. And then it was like airborne special operations. I was like, I'll do that. And I just signed up and, and the rest was history, man. I, I, I joined 98, uh, retired in uh, 2018. And, you know, I went through all the levels of like, you know, private all the way up to I got out as a, a master sergeant. So I had and it was all in psyop. So it's like kind of um, you don't get a lot of like they call them psyop babies. So you don't get a lot of those. You don't you don't see a lot of them all in the units. There's a lot of like a reclass type uh, how, how they fill the. Uh, the slots over there so i did it. my whole career was in psyop and uh just um uh, you meet some interesting people man especially in special operations like trying to work with you know rangers sf and special missions units and but then you get broken off and you have to or then you have to support conventional forces and that is like some of the worst support there is because it's just conventional man it's like 80 second boots on the ground you're just like there's no fun sometimes you know what i mean you got you got to play by their rules and everything like that. But um, yeah, I had a great career, man. I'll, 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 I mean, I went all over the world. I, you know, I went to yeah, Afghanistan, uh, Ukraine, Thailand, Japan, Korea, Australia. I mean, all over the place. It was, I was blessed, man. I, I can say I had a good, good career, good, good people around me, good, good leadership that kind of mentored me through. And, and in 2000, what was it? 2000. When was Benghazi? Oh, that was 2011, right? Yeah, 2011. And uh, I was over in uh, South Africa. I was uh, one of the site planners over there. And uh, and I've been wanting to go to Libya. Like I, we had another another guy there that I knew. He just he came back from Libya when it first kicked off. He was down there for like a couple months and came back. And I was like, man, I'm going to do that. I want to I want to go. You know what I mean? I, I want to go. I want to go support that mission. So I went to the Sergeant Major's office and then like just sit down and like almost like beg him be like hey i'm raising my hand if you need someone i'm the guy i'll go just send me i want to do something I'm bored so i get um so uh, september 11th in benghazi happens and then uh i get a phone call hey george you're going down in a couple of days we got like you're going to be working with the team libya ncoic and i said okay or he said you're going to be the team libya ncoic and i said okay perfect yeah let's go so after the uh the incident happened. I was on a plane two days later down there setting up stuff. They, there was already a team down there that were kind of training people. And uh, so, but they got put on hold. And then the reason why I couldn't go in is because they had like a, a body number on who can leave the country, go in and out of the country. But once that attack happened, it was just like, just get on a plane, go get, get going, get this planning going, get this training going. And then, you know, just take care of stuff and then, you know, do your best. So I get there and then uh, we're with, I'm with another SF team and they're just, we're stuck. We couldn't do, we couldn't leave the wire. It was like, you can leave like once a week just to do a, like a, a face-to-face with your guys, you're training, but you can't train with them. There was, this, there was like a, uh, a little mandate going around. 
So there, that team leaves, and then Mike's team comes in. And uh, there's two airports in, in, in the Tripoli area. There's like the main airport, and then there was another one closer to the city that used to be an Air Force base back in the day. I forget the name, but um, that was like what the uh, uh, OGA used for, like, you know, getting her stuff in. So Mike lands with his two guys. We're on the tarmac with a box truck because they had supplies. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we meet him on the tarmac. We're loading stuff up, and we're pulling out, like, AT4s, crates of ammo, grenades, and nothing's wrapped. It's <laughs> all in the open. You got Libyans there. You got the OGA there. You're like, oh, my God. Like, we're going to – he's going to get kicked out. Man, we're going to get in trouble. So – we're scrambling. We have this metal tape and I like, just tape the boxes, tape the labels. We'll see if we can get through. And I'm going and taping everything down. And that metal tape slices my hand open. And I got blood just like pouring out of my hand. I'm like trying to hold it, <laughs> trying to put this tape on. There's blood smeared on all the boxes. <laughs> and we get out of there. And I'm like, holy shit. And that was like my first interaction with Mike Lutter was like, we got to get this stuff in here. We got to get it covered. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So we go, we spend about, we spent about six months in, um, in, uh, in Libya together. I go back to South Africa and, uh, and he goes back to, uh, Fort Carson. That's who he was, he was at the SIF out there. And, uh, I get out back and then I try to keep in touch with him as best as I could, but he was just the hardest dude to keep in t- touch with. And his mom lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And, uh, she was a baseball. And I got, when I piece us back to, uh, to the States, I went straight down. I hit her up. Like Mike gave me this, like, uh, one of his uh, uh, ODA sweatshirts. And I'm like, bro, I can't, I'm not wearing, I can't wear, I, I, I'm just not going to wear this. Thank you. I'll keep this as a, like a memento. Like, thank you so much. It was a great time. I learned a lot, but I'm not, I can't wear this. I'm not wearing your ODA sweatshirt. Like I'm some, like, like I, like I like suck your dick or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I did some like weird shit to get it. Yeah. It, but he'll tell you I did some weird shit, but I didn't. Okay? <laughs> Everyone listening. But anyway, so uh, I've had that sweatshirt. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it to his mom and do like an introduction so i went down there i talked to his mom and everything and i was like can i get his like email a current phone number or something so i can track him down and then she hooked me up with it and then uh as i was transitioning out of the army retiring I, we just stayed in touch and uh he started this company called field craft survival and i said yo i'm on board all the way sign me up it was him and kurt hohan at the time running it and i was going through my retirement and i was oh my God, i can't wait to get out there and get get some work because i was in because I was clearing, like I have not, I didn't really had any more responsibilities. Like I just taking care of myself. And then finally it was like phone call comes to Hey, I, I called him. I'm like, Hey, I'm retiring this date. And I said, uh, and I'm can start just making my way out. Cause they were in Arizona. Well, they were in, yeah, they were in Arizona at the time. And, uh, he said, yeah, let's go. And, um, I drove me and my wife, she was seven months pregnant at the time. God bless her heart. Uh, <laughs> we drove from Fayetteville, North Carolina, all the way out to Prescott, Arizona in like three, three and a half days. And uh, we get out there, we set up shop and I just start working right, right away. I started out at the uh, like shipping and receiving. And then I went up to Kurt Hohan left the company. So I kind of slid into filled that, that spot and became the vice president of the, you know, of the company. And then, um, but the funny thing is like, you start, you, when you work for our company, it's, it's a small business. We're a startup, you know, and, and everyone has to wear multiple hats. Like if you're not you, like, like you got Mike Glover in there mopping floors before like a class in the warehouse, you had Kevin Owens doing the same thing. You got people moving boxes and shit like that. So it's like, no matter what you do, it's like no one like, yeah, I'm the vice president, but it's like, no, I'm that I'm, I'm setting up events. We're, we're cleaning, we're, we're customer service. So it's, you wear a variety of hats there, but um, yeah. So I got hooked up with Philcraft and been there. It'd be three years in October. This October, I'll, I'll be working there. But basically, you know, if you look at it, we're a preparedness company. We want people to understand, like, when you leave your house, you know, have a plan. Even though you're going to the grocery store, like, what do you have in your car that can save your life? What do you have on your person that can save your life? What knowledge do you have? What training do you have? Like, what – just – and it's weird. Like, if Mike, Mike says that if he can take someone from San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, and, and educate them on – preparedness he said and and have them come to a course or buy like a, a med kit then he went then that's a success for us because it's like we want to make sure everyone's prepared like why wouldn't you want to be prepared i'm not i'm not saying that in the word as like the prepping word mm-hmm. but i'm just like prepared just every day like for example i get up every day i you know i get up get ready to leave before i leave the house i make sure i have 
you know, I start from my head and my toes. I make sure I got my sunglasses. I got my, my, uh, my gun, my, my, my EDC bag or anything I have on me, uh, wallet keys, just like little shit like that will keep you into like a rhythm and a habit. So when you, if you are planning for like a trip, like a cross country trip, you're like, okay, yeah, I got my sunglasses, but what else do I need? And you go out to your, your vehicle and you look at that. You're like, okay, I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to have everything ready to go. And then, um, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff we do, we do a lot of training. Um, we do a lot of pistol training, carbine. We do long gun training. We do resiliency training. We do uh, bug out course training. We'll take like five or six guys, gals or whatever, and put them through a scenario where they're um, – where they're in a country or in, a, in an area where they like something happens and they have to like cross a border or deal with like checkpoints or just navigating that area and to get out. And then we go in and we train them like on land nav, we train them on weapon attack because we train them on like uh, what to do at a checkpoint, things like that. If you ever get involved with like a, like a government official in a foreign country, just how to like handle yourself so you're not getting like rolled up. So that's kind of like. We're a training company. We're a media company. You know, we do like the podcast. We do content. Um, so it's like ever. It's it, it changes every week. Like you know, we get into we do our our Tuesday morning meetings, and we go through everything. But like it, honestly, it just it changes. Dra- it changes like weekly, and then mm-hmm. you know, whatever our focus is, it's kind of what we got to do, and then everything else just kind of supports that that main focus that we're uh, we're uh, our main effort that we're doing. So. Well, yeah, and I, th- I think preparedness is an underrated thing. Like, yeah. even as something as simple as, like, make sure you have jumper cables in your car, you know, because mm-hmm. you never know when either you might need them or somebody else might need a jump. Exactly. Or, like, like if you live in a place like both of us do where it snows, like, have a tow rope. Have something. 100%. And, and I mean, I'm I'm not by any means prepared for everything all the time. I'm but something like jumper cables and a tow rope and stuff. I try to have that shit in my car. Oh yeah. Cause it's like, you might need it. work, man. It's work. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, I think it's really cool what you guys are doing, training people on how to do that correctly. Cause yeah. someone like yep. myself, like, like I know you, like you veterans in the military, you guys learn a lot of that type of stuff when you're in the military. Yeah. Is that true? No, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you- I guess it depends on just like what your job is and stuff like that, too. Because, I mean, I was inside like my whole career and I never went to like a CQB school, a sniper school, things like that. So all we basically did was flat range. You know what I mean? And then when I met up with Mike, we were doing like cool stuff, like cool training because he had that the training for like inside. We just don't have that. I mean, I don't know when I was in. That was you know three years ago, but uh, I don't remember. We never even did that stuff. And I know we you could do that, but that wasn't our main focus was those kind of schools, but no, like I wish I could have gone to those. Would have been cool to have yeah. that knowledge. But. No, I mean like, I guess you, you do do that. Like some <clears throat> mental schools, like when you're in ranger school, sniper school, whatever, like you're, you're prepared by, by setting in, you know, some, some barriers for yourself. Like, okay. Yep. I'm going to tie my shit off with inline bowl and knots because I know I'm going to lose this or get really fucking tired and get lost in the middle of dark at night trying to land yep. and fuck myself. So you kind of you are planned, like you're tying your knots. You know what you need to bring. You know, oh, it's sunny outside, but I know it's gonna fucking rain. You have your poncho, you, so you're prepared in a sense. You're always yeah, exactly. And that, and that does carry over. Like I have an anxiety when I go camping. Like I have everything separated in these totes that I throw them back in my truck. <laughs> I was just gonna yep. bring that up. That every yeah. time we go camping, you are so organized. I have my totes. Yeah, and so it's like I don't want shit to fucking hit the fan, and I'm without this. So I have extra woobies. I have extra tie it on. Yes. you know everything else, and you know, and it's it's more manageable on people's minds if you put them in totes. It's not just the old like 1970s with throwing all of our shit in the back of the station wagon. <laughs> yep. It's just chaos. It's <laughs> exactly. fucking chaos. So you have That's like the one thing too yeah. is like do like I layouts, man. Like I know I you I got we did layouts in the military and it sucked because it was not fun. But now I have my own stuff. So I want to make sure like you said like for I go camping or on a trip or even like going shooting, I lay everything out in front of me and be like, okay. That's that, this, that, this. Okay, got that. Okay, oh, give me, you know, some extra cordage or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually seeing a snapshot of it, knowing that I need to do it. Then I do the same thing. I got totes, and uh, I just put in totes, and let's hit the road. Yeah, well, yeah. and, and I, like I was saying, I think you guys do learn some of that in the military, but it's not necessarily a military thing because, no. like, like me, I, I'm not a military veteran, and 
I always, I overpack for fucking everything. I could be going on a one night trip. My bag is full of like, even just little things like an extra pairs of underwear and socks, but I'm prepared oh, just in case. That's key right there. <laughs> yeah, man. Like you, you never know. And I think be, everybody could be more prepared for things. And you don't have, like you said, you don't have to be like a crazy prepper or whatever. You know, you don't have yeah. like, like buckets of food stored in your basement, which maybe that's not a bad thing either, but it's it's just a good idea to be prepared for whatever you're going to do, whether it's just going to your job for the day, have everything you need. And it's like it. that show on Netflix. It was on, I think it was on like Matt Geo, but it was on Netflix. It was like Preppers, that show Preppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, and they go in there and they give you like a score. Uh, like they go in and they like yeah. go through all your shit and give you a score. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I like, like the show's entertaining, but I don't think I can hang out with somebody like that. Like, <laughs> no, I, like, it'd be exhausting. I'm all about like, I got my stuff and I'm prepared, but it's like, I'm not doing like dress rehearsals, getting the camo net out and, 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 and taking the, the rowboat down to the, the river. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. just, I, it's just, I'm not there yet. I'm not, I, I haven't crossed that threshold of silliness yet. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's still, it's still just very functional, you know, like yes, okay, we, get, exactly. we get, we get baby wipes, <laughs> you know, we got fucking, yeah. we got lotion, right? No. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, dude, it was, I think it was like yesterday. I was laughing my ass off. I was watching the the uh, IGTV video y'all posted. It was the one at the range with the carbine. Sorry. Dude, yeah, dude. And Mike's like, Mike's like, he's like, all right, bring it in. We gotta, we want to. He's like, focus on the the, the safety selectors switch so everyone can see it going from fire and safe to fire. He's like, yeah, focus it on that. Tap it, and you fucking like, tap his gun, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> he's dude, just like, did you just I do was that? So like. In like, I was. It was at the end of the day. Like, we did pistol Saturday, okay, and it was yeah. the best day ever. The 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 weather was great. The students were great. The range was great. Route sixty six shooting park, amazing. Sunday rolled around. We rolled in there. The sun was blazing. I mean, it was hot. Like, it wasn't like hot to where I was like miserable, but it was a uh, hot enough to be like, damn, it's hot out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're out in the flat range and like all day, and like I got this like busted ass hoof right now. I got I had uh, some uh, this planter's work cut out of it. I had to get put under. It was like a whole deal. I've, I've seen you rolling around on your little scooter. God, and I'm I'm on the range like I'm I'm hobbling around like trying to like just not put my whole pressure on my my left foot. But sometimes it's got to the point where the thing was hurt and throbbing. So I was like, you know what? I gotta get on the scooter thing. And I was on that scooter thing all day, man. And it was just. Then at the end, he's like, record this thing for me. And I was so tired. He's like, tap it. In my mind, I'm like, why is he having me tap the gun? Like, why am I doing this? So I go to do it. I'm like, my head, I'm like, why am I doing this, Mike? Like, and he's like, what are you fuck are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> oh, my God. And he showed me that. We were, we were watching on the way. We were, we were uploading. We watched it. And I was like, I don't know what I was doing, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, so we, we have a good time out there good, good time yeah. on the range. And that's the thing like when you're out there like it, it should be a relaxed environment yeah it should yeah. be safe but we should be relaxed should be having fun like if i'm making a, a if you're making a student's tense they're gonna just they're not gonna get the technique or they're not gonna listen they're gonna be so worried about gr- trigger grip oh my god you know so we keep it like loose and nice and then it, the main thing that was one of the co-owners of the range or i think one of the general managers he was out there and took the class with us. So he was like, you know, you guys can come back and do whatever you want. Cause like some ranges you can't, you get to stand there and shoot this range. We were able to move laterally, run and shoot at the same time. So he, it was a, it was a good, good range. So well, yeah. I think, I think like what you said is having a little fun with it is that's a good thing. Cause it might sound counterproductive, but I think the people you're trying to train will take you more serious if you're not yep. so fucking serious. You know what I mean? And oh, that, yeah. that can go for anything. Like even at a job, if your boss is a serious asshole, you're not going to want to do what they're asking you to do. But if they're having no, a little fun with it, yeah. yeah. If they're if they're having a little bit of fun with it, and you can kind of just have fun with it, yeah. It, I think people are more likely to pay attention right. and do do the correct oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. Not, I still even want to come out and do one of the courses because you know I like Mike's take on pistol shooting or any type of shooting. I'm like. Mm-hmm. you know and i'm always down to learn more and just the experience just to have come hang out and shoot you know what i mean too oh but, yeah but i i'm i've never i've never taken any course like that i think that something like that would be really fun yeah no they're really good it's like it's like they're i think we like nine to two is usually the time but 
Man, by the time I'm looking at my watch, it's like one o'clock. I'm like, damn, it's already done already. It's just it goes, it just cycles through so 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 fast. But because you're having a great time out there, you just don't even realize how what time it is. So mm, absolutely, yeah, we'll have to maybe make a trip out to Utah one of these days. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, how often do you guys do the court? Do the actual courses? We have, honestly, I think we have a we. So we have a training division side of it with Raul Martinez, um, and uh, he runs our training side and. They have courses every weekend, multiple states, multiple classes. So if you go on the website, it, it breaks it down by state in the, in the training section. So you see where we're at. So gotcha. we try to do every weekend. We try and do something like this weekend. We have up at uh, up at the HQ in, uh, in Heber. We have uh, basic pistol and it's sim. So it's inside. You know, you, know, you just, just pay your slot and show up, and and you know everything's everything's already laid out, right, right, just ready to go. So nice. That's Thank cool. You. Um, so something I kind of want to touch on with you that like we were talking earlier <clears throat> before we got on mic or on for recording about when you were on Austin's podcast, I listened to that and something that kind of struck me that you talked about on there that I've heard the same exact thing from this guy sitting right here to my left is trying to talk to like therapists through zoom. <laughs> Cause oh I, you touched God. on that and I know Kevin here has been going through the same shit and I was wondering if you could kind of dive into that a little bit. Cause so you know, it's, it's hard enough to share like what you're going through. Like if I didn't like, like I'm like, I would never reach out to somebody you know, like to get help or something like that. But you know, I, I got to like depend on a dude, like, like how we are right now on zoom. Like I'm talking to, you know, I'm talking to this doctor in his office on a computer screen. It's just, I can't get like, I feel like I, I can't let my uh, guard down to like really tell him how I really feel. So I have to like, like interrogate him or something or, or use like, or, or, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, I just like, don't tell the whole truth basically just because so, I'm like, I don't know this person. Like I can't, I'm not shaking your hand. Like I'm not in your office. You know what I mean? I don't feel comfortable. Like I'm sitting in, in my, in a spare bedroom in my basement talking to like, uh, like a psychiatrist on like some PTSD type shit. And it's like, it's not a comfortable environment. I, I can't open up like to a doctor like that. So you're sitting and you're talking and you're trying to relate. And it's just, it's the typical shit they ask, man. It's like all the same. Thing. If, if I get asked, are you, are you thinking about suicide? Well, like, no, man. Like, I don't think about that shit. Cause I'm not like, I just don't have, it's not there, but like, it's like, well, thanks. I'm now I'm thinking about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. It's like, like, oh, like, cause they, they talk about that for like the first 10 minutes. And so every time they start doing that, I'm like, should everything about suicide? Oh fuck. Am I depressed right now? <laughs> Fuck. Yes, and I'm like, I'm scared. What if I do kill myself today? What if I just did it? How would yeah, I? How would I know if I'm gonna? Say that? And all of a sudden, it's in my fucking mind. Now I'm anxious. Yeah. And this motherfucker's like, all right, well, cool, good talking. Hey, let's let's move on. I'm like, no, I'm still stuck on this bullshit. You just fucked yeah. me up. You just fucked me up, dude. Does that not happen <laughs> happen in person and, like that? No, it does either way. Because no. I was in person for two appointments, and they went back to Zoom, and then we're trying to do EMDR on Zoom. I'm like, cool, EMDR and Zoom. I don't know how successful. The ratings are on that. What is that? What's that? What's like, that? I even like the uh, eye movement. Um, oh, okay. Um, so, like this, it's like a so you know when you I, I when you have rapid eye movement at night when you actually get good sleep and you're getting it you know you're essentially dealing with your shit and we're not sleeping when mm-hmm. you're not dealing with your shit we're not filtering out the things and processing them. So yep. so they try to do it with EMDR by um, what's that stand for? Do you know? Um, Fuck man, eye movement rapid. I don't fuck. No, it's not even it at all. I don't remember. I'm, I'm gonna but look it up Google right it. now because I'm but, curious. But essentially, yeah, you're associating left and eye movements with negative um, events, and then so you're bringing those up, and then you do it with positive events or thoughts or feelings. So yeah. you can associate. Now you can relearn to associate those words or feelings over those negative. So you're not you're not avoiding. You're just processing and then putting good memories over those. Oh, okay. Like, think about a good memory now by using left, left and eye, right movements with tapping and whatever else, and now associate that word or feeling whenever you feel this. And then essentially over time, it replaces those feelings, you know? It's oh. eye movement desensitiz- desensitization and reprocessing. Yeah. Now oh, you know. Okay. It's especially supposed to be the best method you can do in clinical work other than you know, you can using psychedelics like mushrooms, weed, right. whatever else. So yeah. it's like the last thing you do before you, if you know, it's you know, if you're not gonna try that stuff, which I haven't yet, I'm going to. Yeah, you've been awesome. talking. I'm gonna bring that up. 
talking about yeah. that forever. I'm yeah, it's like do that because I I can fall asleep. Like my wife, she hates me at night sometimes. Cause I'll like I'm like all right, good night, Mwah. and it's like three minutes later I'm <laughs> out. Like I'm done. I'm dead to the world. But when it comes around like one o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, four or five, six, it's like I'm up every hour on the hour for some reason. Mm-hmm. I can't get back to sleep. So that's the one thing I'm trying to work on too. Is that because I think what it is, it's a that anxiety get creeps in in your head, and once it, once it gets in, there's no. I'm not closing my eyes. I'm not resting. I'm no matter what I do. Like I try to like like at the hotel, we were in a I think the double tree, and I'm laying there. I'm like, okay, time for bed. Let's go. And then boom, I start thinking about something. I'm like, okay, let's do this breathing thing in through your mouth or in, in through your nose out through your mouth. Relax. I just it, that's not working for me, man. I need like like either like smoking a fat blunt or something or just give me like a nice sleeping pill or something to, right. just to keep me uh, sleeping. So, yeah. and it seems like, yeah, your cortisol is going high in the middle of the night. Like mine does that too. And I, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes I wake up with night sweats and with the cortisol being high night sweats, you know, and, um, you know, it, it could be a hormonal thing. It could be an estrogen being too high or just fucking yeah. life stress. Right. Or grieving. Oh, yeah. But, um, you know, it sucks because well, one thing what I've been doing is when it's been happening lately is the VA made the mindfulness app and considering it was done by the VA, it's actually really well done. Um, so there's a bunch of stages you can go through it, like for driving, eating, sitting down, laying down, like loving yourself, everything, but it's being, being mindful mm-hmm. and being present in the moment. So yeah. when it happens to me, I'll just put the app on and listen to the lady talk to me for 15 minutes and just let everything go and, I'll yeah. fall, and then I'll fall back to sleep. So it that's the hard, work. that's the hardest thing, man, is, is just like trying to shut your brain. I'm trying to let, trying to let it go. Letting go is like the hardest thing because like you, like you've seen so much traumatic shit and doing so much traumatic shit that it's kind of hard not to like, not think about it. And it's hard, I guess it's hard to like, I find sometimes it's just hard to like, like let it go. Like, let, like letting the feelings go. Like I left the like I don't know how to explain this like I left Afghanistan I left it behind I left it in Afghanistan but I've taken those situations and I can't get rid of situations you know what I mean it's like I can pull myself out of the out of the country but everything that happened there is still there you know it still happened to me and I saw it and and I know I've got hundreds of thousands of other, other <clears throat> soldiers have seen the same same shit and it's like yeah I can leave the country I still have brought all this shit with me, you know, and, and I got like, if I can explain, like I left the country back there, but the experience is, it's, they don't go away. Yeah, you know, you, they'll you, always be there. You left the country, but you didn't come home and shed skin. Mm. Exactly. You're still wearing yeah, the same like, skin you had, man. I'm not and, doing a brain swap over when I get back to brag. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, and what sucks is when you have those moments of, what we would call complacency where we feel really mm-hmm. good. We're like, man, this feels good. And then you snap out of it for, you snap back into it for a second because now you're like, no, this isn't good. I have to be that person. I was in the deployment, always ready, always ready to fucking go. Yep. Like, no, because that person is an unhealthy person when it comes to chronic behavior, that person yep. is good in minute little moments. You're talking about 15 minutes to 45 minutes at a time in a firefight to save yourself, save other people and kill without remorse. But now you have to drop it and be cool again. You can't, yeah. live, if you live in that too long, that's the, that's why people get fucked up. Your, yep. your adrenal glands are going all the time. And then your fucking testosterone drops and you're depressed and you're fat and you have bitch tits and then you just kill yourself. Yeah, like, exactly. I mean, that's how I start. I mean, that's, that's how it is. Like that may not be the, like what people want to hear, but that's how it happens. You're exactly right. There's, like the way you described it should be described to it to everybody because that is the way it is. It's not this, well, he fell into a depression and he started to feel anxious and then he started to overeat. We didn't really understand. Like, no, motherfucker. Like in when I'm in the military, you talk to me like this. You're fat. Stop it. Get the fuck off your ass and do something about it. You know what I mean? Like, but it, it's easier said than done. You know yeah. what I mean? Easier said than done. Like I can go up. To like Mike come up to me like George, come on man, you're slow. Let's go run. You're I see how you're getting overweight. Get your ass in, in the gym. Let's go work out. You know what I mean? That's you know stuff like that. But yeah, I mean it's it sucks because all that all those emotions really affect your hormones. We talked about it with the 
107 too. Mm-hmm. You know, like you two ramped up all the time and your testosterone mm-hmm. can't keep up. You're in this positive feedback loop and hypothalamus pituitary gland, right? Thing. Yep. And now you, you're, you're stuck. Your estrogen's too high. Your testosterone's too low. It's like, you got to reset. And that's the thing too, is testosterone, uh, regulates your serotonin. So if testosterone's low, lower than it should be, then your serotonin might be lower than it should be, which means your dopamine's probably off too, you know, or you're, or you're, because your serotonin's low, you're craving dopamine rushes. So you're being impulsive and buying things, fucking people you shouldn't be fucking, gambling. you know, gambling. Yeah. You know, like now you uh, have this. 100, man. And then 100%. someone's like, hey, man, here's some SSRIs for you. Like, how about we test my testosterone first and then see if we can get on a diet that promotes um, an inflammatory diet first. Yeah. You know, gluten free and everything else. But that's, I don't think doctors really want to teach people. They just assume they want a drug, you know? Yeah. That's, that, that, what I want to, I got, there's an, um, I live, I, I live in American Fort, Utah, but down the road is Orem, Utah. And they opened up a VA clinic down there, a brand new facility, very nice. But man, I went in there for like, I just have chronic neck and back. I mean, uh, and uh, I go in there and I'm like, Hey, I, you know, but my back, my neck's been hurt. I just want, I want treatments. Like send me to a chiropractor or, or like a physical therapist that can like contort me and stretch me out. And he's like, oh. and then before you even like, before I haven't had that option, I was like, Oh, do you, is there something that you need? Like, like, what can we give you? And I'm like, you know, if, if you're giving me anything, I said, just give me something. Like, I just need something that's to like, help me fall asleep some, sometimes and then just relax my back and my neck. And they're like, okay, we can do flex roll. And I'm like, okay, cool. But I'm like, damn, it went straight to like pills. Just like right, that. Right, I'm like, right yeah. pills. I know when we had a uh, Chelsea from the 107 foundation on, she told us some crazy fucking number about the prescriptions. Oh, that, yeah. The yeah. vets have been prescribed. And I don't remember what that number was, but it was ridiculous. Well, that's the thing, too, is, when, and it's not like, I mean, NSAIDs aren't good for you. I mean, neither is, uh, you know, Tylenol. And I mean, shit, think about, there, yeah. was, there was a study with Tylenol, which is acetaminophen. The acetaminophen negates the, rea- negates the inner, sorry, basically your metabolic stress when you work out, how that mm-hmm. I mean, how that adapts and improves and negates that. So essentially, if oh, you're damn. taking Tylenol and going out and like, okay, I'm doing 20 by 100 intervals, it's like, yeah, I guess it's essentially not going to do anything for you. Wow. Because I guess, and the same thing with like antihistamines and histamines and all this other shit. So it's really weird how yeah. all these things actually that, that they give you right off the bat for allergies or pain or inflammation kind of just fuck you in the long run anyway. Wasn't that oh, same yeah. with like antibiotics too? Don't they fuck right. with you pretty bad? Oh, antibiotics because your gut brain biome is super important. That's why you eat gluten, you get inflammation in your gut, then all of a sudden you're depressed in your fucking your head and you're stressed out. Mm-hmm. I mean, gut brain is so really important. Like you shouldn't be on antibiotics like, unless you got fucked up. You know? Yeah. Like a couple of years ago, I got my testosterone. Uh, like we got our like me and my got our uh, our blood work done. And we were going through this company called BioStation, and they're in Florida. And I got my results back and I was going through my testosterone. It was lower than the average of my age. And uh, it explained a lot. Like you just said, like it was just, I was all out of whack, but then I got on like uh, just the hormone therapy, uh, the, all the, the, the hormone therapy and dude, it was good. Like it, I liked it, but at the same time it had, you know, it had side effects to it. I, mean, I gained a little weight. Um, I got a little bloated a little bit, but once I got my diet under control and everything like that, everything smoothed out, and it w- it actually was very, uh, very beneficial just to get me back, like like my system back. You know what I mean? I just felt like shit. I was like, you know, like hormonal. I felt like depressed. Like I watched like one of those uh, Sarah McLaughlin videos and just like <laughs> bowling my eyes out. Dude, I mean, that, see that happened like, to me when I they put me on Clomid um, because my estradiol went way too high. It was like eighty five or something. Mm-hmm. My testosterone was like fifteen hundred. I was really sensitive to it, essentially. It built my, threw my testosterone from like really low to fifteen hundred, right. and my estradiol are way too high, so my estrogen was fucked. Um, and That's the thing. It, like, and they were asking me like, like your like your physical side effects with the low testosterone. I said, you know what? I couldn't tell you that I had low, like I, I didn't even know. Like I still had a great sex drive. I still was like out there working out, and but there was something still in there. Like I just. Something was just weird, you know. What I mean, it was just felt off. Yeah. But like physically, I, I was working out. I was fine. I was, you know, and other thing other than that. But it was just, uh, yeah, it just felt you just felt a little off. 
Yeah, that you know, oh. I think the best way to do it really is just a physiological dose of testosterone, not fucking clomid, mm-hmm. and you know, as needed, a uh, uh, you know, estrogen blocker. Like I should have been on estrogen blocker the whole time I was taking that, and I probably because yeah. I same I got like fat on my chest, which still hasn't gone away. I got fat, bloated, and just emotional. And that's because estrogen was too high, you know. Yeah. Um, so hopefully I don't get breast cancer. I know, right? <laughs> <Dude>. oh. <laughs> well, and like when it comes to the the mental aspect of just mental health in general, and this doesn't have to be like a veteran thing. It's just a human thing, which I've realized even for myself or with you, if you just have somebody to fucking talk to, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a therapist. I do recommend therapy to people, but just somebody you can vent to about the shit you're going through, especially if they can relate somehow, that helps. Yeah. That, that helps a lot. I mean, I've, I've had little things in my life and just having a friend or my wife or whoever it is to just talk to and vent to about things. Yeah. That, that's one thing I, I need to learn is I need to learn to like vent or talk to my, like my spouse. I mean, my, my wife is like, she's my, my best friend. That's mm-hmm. my ride or die. My, my bottom bitch. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> she is my everything. She takes, she's the rock. She takes care of shit, you know? Like I left um, for this trip and she got pneumonia last week and oh, we shit. have a two year old, two and a half year old son and she grinded through the weekend, man. Mm-hmm. And, and my two and a half old son is just, he's at a point now where he does not shut up. He does not, he doesn't move. doesn't stop moving. It's like constant move, like mm-hmm. constant. So she grinded the whole weekend and, and took him out to the park and everything like that. So it's like, it's like, man, I got to like, if you can't depend on that person to talk to, then who else are you going to talk to? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But and then sometimes I don't want to like, I don't want to like tell her all my problems. I don't want to make her feel like, damn, you, my husband is like, you don't want to burden. You don't want to be a burden. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call the mental hospital, get you checked in. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, yeah. Plus I ain't trying to like, I ain't trying to share certain things. That, and, and the best thing about it is like, I, uh, I met her when I was transitioning out of the army. So, I didn't have to put her through none of the, you know, the, the deployments, the trips, the TDYs, and just the bullshit of of the military. Um, so I got lucky with that. And uh, but yeah, man, she's she's my rock, man. She 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 takes care of a lot of shit. She's like for the family though. She's our CFO. You know what I mean? She takes mm-hmm. care of all the finances. She makes sure she's moving and going. So yeah, no, big big shout out to my wife right now. You, so you, you've been together with her for what three years? Four no, years? I think it'd be. F- we met in damn. When did we meet? We met 2017, I think. And um, you got me. Yeah, okay. you're, you're still there. Your video went away for like two seconds. We'd be married. Well, I think we're we're gonna be married four years uh, next April. So we've been together for a while. We met met on Bumble on those little app. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you it's possible. She, that's all I wrote, man. Bumble was this. It was a good one. You know, yeah. I found her there, so it was good. Yeah, that's something like the whole dating app thing. I've never dealt with because I've been with my wife for like ten years. Yeah, and... I, I divorced my like my first marriage lasted about fifteen years. We got divorced, and uh, and I, you know, I then I, for some reason I got into like a relationship, like kind of like a couple months after, and kind of was a. That was a thing for a year or so. Mm-hmm. But I got all that, and I just took a break. And then my buddy at work, he was like, "Yo, you should get on Tinder." Or, or you know, he's like, "Yo, you need to get a Tinder account, man. Get like put yourself out there." I was like, "I don't know, man." <laughs> and then I got on Tinder, and it was like, "Wow, it's like this out here." Like, <laughs> you're you're like speaking directly to Kevin right now. Oh, man. it's just a bunch of hookers. He's recent. He's recent. He's recent. Is, man. When, when I mean hookers, I mean like I mean literal hookers. <laughs> like it's there's most, oh, it changed. There's way more people that are not real on there than people that are real. Well, and, nice. I mean, but just in that world in gen- general, like Kevin recently went through a divorce and all that, and he's trying to kind of get himself out there, and it's not going well. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a social butterfly, and yeah, I'm not good with women in general anyway. Like I, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not, I was not a bad husband whatsoever. I just mean like I'm not good at like. <clears throat> Like how to talk to him and shit. I'm just like a polite, like, oh, cool, all right, well, well yeah. You're, you're socially yeah. awkward in general until you really get to know somebody. Yeah, but so that's hard in the beginning. That's the hard part because yeah. people think like this guy's just fucking weird or whatever. <laughs> like he's talking about Lord of the Rings and shit. Like, <laughs> you yeah. I mean, like that's the hard part too. Like you're trying to like meet people. It's like I'm on an app meeting people. It's like oh, yeah, it's stupid. What's your what's your favorite color? <laughs> yeah, seriously, like. But like you said, yeah, come you, on, man. You, you met your wife on an app, so. Yeah, that's it's possible. 
Yeah, so it worked out good. Yeah, but that, but get, get on Bumble though, man. I think, yeah, I think you might find that one on Bumble, man. Yeah, or make make her talk <laughs> first. Yeah, <laughs> then you won't be dealing with as many crazies. I know. Maybe. Well, that yeah, you're right. That's that's the thing is I'm not interesting on there. I'm like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> not like you know, it's like I'm some witty fucking thing to say or whatever. Like, hey. <laughs> you know, like, oh, shoot. what's up? Um, yeah, but anyway. Fuck me, sorry. That coffee's good. I made good coffee today. <laughs> Did you get the mixture done right? I it's been good for the last few days. This is I've been hand grinding with an antique hand grinder. And oh. so it's just making sure that it's it's consistent um yeah. for my pour over because the spring's old, so it just loosens up a little bit. So you gotta make sure every time you fine tune it yeah. um, before the pour, but it was really good today. It's a light roast awesome. though. I like them dark roasts. I have like a fucking dark, dude. Like <laughs> Like yeah, you know yeah. that like that Iraqi chai your, you get that, your out. yeah remember that Iraqi <laughs> yeah. coffee you get is like basically like they hand you this little thing like an ounce or two ounces. What the I fuck had, is uh, this? in uh, Ethiopia go- going through the airport there, man. It was like it was like tar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it dude, like, there was shit on the bottom of the cup and everything. I was like, good night. Yeah, they did it. I don't know what it is about the Middle Eastern countries, but they like yeah, like or Africa, I guess too. Like yeah, like. These little fucking like one or two ounce things. It's with, like an espresso and it's shot. It's like tar, but then they put like a pound of sugar in it, dude. <laughs> yeah, yes they do. That, that yeah, that raw and, sugar. Yeah, and then they just yeah just yeah just fucks your asshole. Up I was gonna say bit. that'll make you shit. Yeah, it's Be nice lactated. though. Put a little Copenhagen in and just go for it, like, <laughs> dude, just full send. Like, just I hold on. No, I don't remember ever wearing underwear during my deployments. I wear Ranger panties. I worked out, but I was like, why? I'm just yeah. gonna have shit them or something. <laughs> Because you never know when you're going to get sick, dude. Like, uh, oh, yeah. Well, I guess we can go ahead and wrap this up. I'm sure you got shit to do. I know Kevin has to go back to school. I got to go play Frisbee. He gets to go play Frisbee with oh, his yeah. friends. Actually, I had to get my kids first. <laughs> but dude, we, we, is, it, is it Ultimate Frisbee or Frisbee Golf? Ultimate Frisbee. Oh, damn. So I'm getting out there. Yeah, my ankles rolled. So, and I'm really like older than everybody else. So I'm, I'm embarrassed because I'm looking like some like fat guy out there. Right oh, right shit. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like yeah, whatever. Just just run them over. Yeah, but no, we we appreciate you doing this, man. This was oh, thanks, man. Yeah, definitely. Just uh, just shoot me the link, or and I'll send you some some pictures, and then uh, we'll just go from there. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I appreciate man reaching out because I saw you. It's funny you said that. I saw you guys at the uh, at the Black Rifle tent. I was like. Oh, that was like a fun park. Everybody was laughing and joking. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I want to have fun too. Yeah, like, I was dude. Bored as fuck. Well, like I told you, like yeah. we, there was a few different times we we walked through that little vendor village and we're like, fuck, yeah. we, should, we should go talk to the guys at Fieldcraft. And but every time we'd walk by, you had people there, and it's yeah. like, and then our when we were heading out, we were finally leaving. We were walking up, and it looked like nobody was there, and people walked up. I'm like, I asked Kevin, I'm like, do you want to wait and like go talk to him? He's like, dude, we, we got to get on the road. I'm like, yeah. So we ended up getting on the road, but no, I'm glad we made this happen. Yeah. I I think that Sunday they they closed down early. We closed down early because like the big storm yeah, was coming through. Yeah, yeah, they were uh, right when we got done recording that podcast in the tent. Everybody started breaking shit down, and I had just laid out a bunch of our fucking stickers out too for people to grab. Yeah. <laughs> and damn. then they start just fucking clearing tables. And, <laughs> yeah, it's like damn it. But no, I'm I'm glad I'm glad we made this happen. And I appreciate you coming yeah. and doing this. No, thank you so much for having me, man. Yes, sir. And one of these days we'll have to do it in person. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Well, I All appreciate right, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you I'll later. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Later.